Oh yes, this is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. Today's show is sponsored by Ringmaster on a mission to launch B2B podcasts that create relationships, generate revenue, and drive growth. Ringmasterlive.com. Bam. All right, there it is. I hit the button. I hit that record button, and then we are off on this journey. I am so excited to talk to today's guest. He is an absolute badass. He's a serial entrepreneur, a leader, a marketer, marketing thought leader, and he has this passion for growth, which we need some more of that on this show. We're going to talk about growth. We're going to talk about what's right, what's wrong. We're going to smash a few things. He's been a member of EO since 2015. Man, he just um, co-founder and chief growth officer at High Level Marketing, Wes Matthews. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, Casey. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm good. I I can't wait to learn from you. I have my blank um, piece of paper over here. I'm going to magically transform (laughs) this like a magic trick by the end of this uh, podcast. Um, I'm excited to pick your brain and learn from you. I'm so stoked that you're here to share all this with us. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to pass you Thor's hammer. It's so heavy, but I know you work out. So take that hammer for me, smash some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception, set the record straight once and for all. Got it. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah, I think uh, a good one for me, I think when, you know, using the general term marketing, um, what I often hear, right. So we have about 2000 customers that we work with. We generate leads and opportunities for these customers. And I think the one thing that always that I hear about that people talk about, complain about a lot of misconceptions are when companies are spending money in advertising, the marketing company typically talks about impressions, right? So whether it's a billboard, a magazine, or even a web company talking about, you know, getting your ad on Google or whatever platform they're talking about, you know, you're paying a fee in exchange for impressions. Well, for, to me, if you, if you boil me down to the core, I, I, you know, impressions are bullshit. It's, it's all about quality. Um, It's it's actually about uh, conversions, right? So like you could tell me, Hey, we're going to show your ad to a million people. But if those million people aren't going to take action and do anything with that advertisement, it means nothing to me. And I see oftentimes, you know, we do a lot in the home services space. This is what they're sold. They're sold like, hey, we're going to, you know, put you here and do all this. And you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for these impressions. And then they come to us and they're like upset or they're burnt. And they're like, we've tried marketing. We tried all these things. You know, we we got a million instances here, yet we got nothing. And for me, it's kind of funny because it's like, you know, we just have to, you know, you have to really define your target audience, yeah. get in front of that audience and have a clear call to action. Like, what's the hook? You know, why do people care? And, and just find the quality versus just people throwing around impressions. And oftentimes I bump into other sales organizations and people, and that's all they talk about. And it, and it doesn't make any sense. Um, Cause if I could say, look, you know, you can spend X for a million impressions, or if I could guarantee you five leads, do you really care at the end of the day, how many impressions there are at the end of the day, the businesses we work with, you know, B2C scrappy entrepreneurs, they're just like, Hey, we've got a truck on the road. We've got a tech. He's got to do five jobs a day or we're losing money, whatever that metric is. Yeah. And then we work backwards to really understand how do we actually get these leads and get these jobs. And I'll tell you, nobody cares. Nobody cares where they come from as long as they're quality so I see all these competing marketing companies just throw out impressions. And it's just, it's kind of funny to me that it's still prevalent today, 12, 13 years later. Um, but again, you know, as a small you know, as a small business and not being exposed to marketing or advertising or trusting companies, you wouldn't necessarily know. And quite frankly, a lot of people are intimidated. So they're not going to question the marketing company. They're, they don't even, they don't want to come across like they don't even know what impressions are, but they don't even know what impressions are. I would say the marketing sales agents don't even know what impressions are. Right. So yeah, for me, like that's the big misconception. So again, I think the big takeaway from that is trust, but verify everything. And I don't care if you're working with, you know, whoever you're working with, just break that down. Right. I think impressions are at the highest level and I'm not saying they're bad, but understand what that's going to net in terms of value. So I tell every customer, I don't care if you're a plumber. I don't care if you're selling a hundred thousand dollar widgets. It doesn't matter. You should know your cost per acquisition per customer, figure out that number, right? And then figure out where to play with that number, right? Is it TV? Is it radio? Is it billboards? Is it digital marketing? Is it traditional print advertising? Is it social media? 
figure out the impressions and the and what's and the opportunities that are that are going to be generated from that medium to get to your customer acquisition costs. And obviously, for me, what we do with our customers is, I mean, look, I'm in digital marketing for a reason because I really believe in Google um, and, and lead generation from that regard as your best bang for your buck. Figure out what that metric is, and then work with a company that you can point at and say. I need a hundred more leads, 10 more leads, whatever that is. You know the metric. You you build trust with that company. So you know, for example, if you're a plumber and we're generating you leads for $20 a lead, the plumber could care less where it came from. But if they know they're getting a quality lead for 20 bucks and they need five leads, it's a hundred bucks. You know, yeah. so if we could forecast out, it's just having that trust and respect. And you know, because oftentimes I just see companies just scrambling, they're putting money everywhere and Hey, it was a great campaign. You know, they got us, you know, 500,000 impressions. Well, how many leads did you get? Well, I don't know. You don't track yeah. what you're doing? Well, no. You know, we got a couple of calls. We have no idea where they're coming from. We think it's from that. It's like, you think it's from that? So we're really big on, and with the web, without even hiring a digital marketing company, you can use your website as a tool, create specific pages from within your website with dedicated phone numbers, forms, so you can track the leads that you're getting from that um, campaign. So if you are doing a a print or radio something and you don't have a marketing company, you would know exactly how many people came in from that specific marketing campaign to that specific page or called you or filled out that form. So that's probably the biggest misconception. I mean, it's a pretty simple one, but I think it's one that's really overlooked. And, and, you know, look, I mean, it's uh, marketing dollars, I like customers to look at those dollars and, and be serious about them because they can make or break you. Yeah. And just asking a couple questions, trusting and, you know, working with the right companies to guide you can be the difference of it's night and day. You know, oftentimes we take a lot of customers, they just had no idea what they're paying or what their customer acquisition cost is or what impressions are. Drill that down into, hey, it's $350 a lead. And then we also work further, which is, okay, well, how many leads do you need to talk to before you get a close? Well, I close 90% of them, Wes, or 100%. Like, that's fantastic. Let's use 25%. Let's say one out of four. So if you're spending 250 bucks a lead, right, the cost isn't really 250 bucks. It's 1000 because you're going to have to talk to four of those leads to get a job. And a lot of businesses, they just, again, they're not marketers. They're not, like, they just don't know this. And we try to make it really simple. And you can apply that to digital marketing, but you can apply that to anything you're investing in, right? If you want to invest in a kid's soccer program or give money here, like you can use that metric to say, hey, if we have X amount of dollars per year, what's going to get us the biggest bang for the buck and, and really measure it. Measure the hell out of it. You're spending a dollar, make sure you know where that dollar is going. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, man, so much here to, to dissect. Uh, where does this come from? I feel like it's like the common cold you, I've encountered this. It's everywhere. The idea that, you know, it's like asking kids, would you rather have uh, this $1 or four quarters or like three quarters? And they're like three quarters, of course, you know, (laughs) and then they end up down to like, you know, a a few pennies and they, they feel like, Oh, this is great. Right. No, this is, it's the, where does this misconception come from? Why do, why do we do this? I think it's sexy because if I, if I said to you, Hey, Casey, like, we can get you a million instances over here. Yeah. You're like, wow, like you're, yeah. you're great. You must be great at what you do. And I just got a million instances over here. Like it's just yeah. your brain's going to just think associate a million with something great. Yeah. And a lot of people fall for it. And look, sometimes it works. Right. But I will tell you, we're thriving because it doesn't. You know, most people come to us because they're not happy. They're continuously seeking. Um, but again, I feel bad for the companies that have completely struck out because they're just so tired of marketing companies not delivering. And that's the uphill battle. Yeah. Those are the objections we run up against when we sign clients and work with clients. It's, you know, Wes or whomever, like we've been down this road multiple times. Why are you different? And that's really how we set our company up. We're, we're a transparent digital marketing company. We'll tell you what, you know, we'll tell you the information so you can make an, an educated decision. Yeah. It just makes our life so much easier. Yeah. You know, it- it's, it's so true. Like it, it's sexy. It's flashy. Maybe I can be an Instagram star now because I have a million views of my YouTube or, you know, or this ad. Um, but it could totally be the wrong person. It reminds me, I had a chance to chat with uh, the CEO of like a, a rental office space company, kind of like the Regis, you know, uh, yep. and 
and yeah, I was asking him about his marketing and he said, you know what? I don't really care about that. All I want is in-person visits. So I just want people to come and show up. And then my you know person on site will kind of razzle dazzle them and away we go. And he was just so obsessed with that, that metric. And like I immediately saw, I was trying to show him that, you know, as a marketer, if I wanted to be an evil marketer, <laughs> wear a black hat, I could, you know, and this is where if you're not aligned, I could get hundreds of people to come to their, you know, like rental office space thing. I can get students. I'm offering them free pizza. Right. I'll, I'll give parents awesome. free babysitting. I can get, I can get millions of people to come to this office. None right. of them are going to buy office space though. Right. right. And, and I, I, he was the CEO of the company. So it was like, man, he, even he didn't quite get it. Um, you know, we had to deprogram him to, to see the difference. So it sounds like one of the solutions here is just really calculating out that cost per acquisition and understanding how much does it actually take to convert? And I, I don't, I mean, anyone really, even the, even though I think you mentioned plumbers, they know, Hey, you know, how many people call versus how many people book? They probably have right. like a rough number of that. And it's that same kind of thing. How many people do you have to have call you to where you're going to get, you know, a job that day? And, and I'm so puzzled today that a lot, like I would have, I would have assumed and thought a lot of companies know that piece of information you just mentioned. Right. And most of them don't. Yeah. And it's it's kind of scary. So, I mean, I think that's where I feel a lot of fulfillment and I, and I love, I still love what we do because it's simple. It's a simple tool, but once you understand that, I mean, then you can become unstoppable and you can really grow and scale a company and it's, you know, it's a little intimidating. And that's what I've always tried to do as an entrepreneur is like make people feel comfortable. So like, you don't have to feel stupid. Like, I don't know how to plumb my drain. Like, I don't know anything about plumbing. Right. Yeah. That's okay. Like I'll ask questions or hire a professional. Like I like to build relationships with professionals. I trust who can, you know, more educate me. Right. I think most marketing companies and advertising, you know, digital marketing, it's like, this is what we do. Like, boom, boom, boom. Like we'll get you leads. Like we take it so much further because mm. it's so much more, right. It's like, you can, you know, we lead a horse to water and then there's the automation on the back end. And like, we really get to know customers business because lead generation and, and just it's, it's a, it's a complete ecosystem. Like just generating that lead is one part of it. Right. right? Cause then you, then you get to the point of like, Hey, these leads suck <laughs> got the four leads and they're terrible. It's like, okay, well walk me through what you did. Well, you know, I was on the job site all day and I got back with them, you know, the following day and nobody wanted to do business with us. It's like, dude, again, we talked like you got to get back within like 60 seconds, you yeah. know, because all people are going to do is go down the line of Google and they're going to talk to the first person who picks up the phone who sounds professional and can do a good job. Right. So yeah. there's a lot to it, but I think you have to get that. You have to be comfortable and confident with that first part. You got to know that number because then again, you can spin that off with partnerships. Or right? I was talking to somebody earlier this morning about you know, talking about something similar and they had a like-minded company that's inside people's homes. Like they did window washing and they're a carpet cleaning company. And they're like, Hey, we want to work with this company and they're going to refer us to their clients. If your marketing costs per job, sales and marketing is 10 to 15%, meaning you got to pay your salesperson, you got to pay the marketing expense. You can take that same fee, give it to that company for closed jobs. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So if you're going to, so if you can build alliances of partnerships and just instead of investing in your own marketing and your salespeople and your team, let's just say it's a hundred dollars, right? Let's just say your cost for that job as that plumber is a hundred bucks internally. If you have a secondary company that you can partner with that can give you a closed job, give them a hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Start to build alliances. So like you can use that number as like the go-to number for everything you do in all your conversations. And what's cool about, you know, working with us or other great digital companies is like, once you know that number, then me, it's like, how do you get that number down? How do you keep yeah. driving that number down and drive quality up and you can start playing with it? But, you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, to me, like, that's how you scale a company. Like, it's just a math, it's just a simple math problem. I mean, obviously you have processes and operations behind the scenes. Like I'm more of a visionary, right? I can come up with the ideas. You need yeah. a team to support that. But I think that's how then you can build a proper p and gross profit margin, like then you can really start to look at your numbers and how you're billing mm -hmm. and how you need to build customers just based around that number. Where do you start? Where do you start with calculating this thing out? Um, I want to scale the company. You want to grow the thing. You want to calculate this thing. And 
build it out? What, what yep, was our first step? So you could take a, the sidestep approach would be contact a really good digital marketing company or figure out how, so Google used to be amazing in terms of how transparent they would be. Yeah, so if you're a plumber, right. right? You could search in your area and it would tell you about how, how much a click would cost. So for everybody that doesn't know, anytime you see at the very top of Google, the top three ads, every time you click on that, it charges that company a fee. And it could be a few cents to like $50 a click, sometimes a hundred dollars a click. Yeah. So really we would work with people and, and, and we have some estimates around how many clicks it takes to get a lead and that kind of thing. So getting that information from Google around the market. So for a plumber, for example, it's about $50 a lead, give or take in different markets. So like we've done the due diligence as a company for the, the for most industries where we know, like for example, divorce attorney for a lead for divorce attorneys, like $250 for, for Google, for a Google ad for a plumber, it's about 50 bucks. For water damage, it can be two fifty to five hundred. So that's uh, a good... is that the click or is that the the lead? That's, that's the, the leader. Lead. Yeah, that's, that's, the lead. The, that's for the lead. So yeah, was... that's for the lead. And um, that's the calculation you were saying, where you might have fifty people click, one right. of them converts. You take all those costs, put them together. Right. Exactly. Um, and that's where like you can get a roundabout figure, but then also look internally, right? Like I come from old school where I had dialers, right? Like traditional marketing, where I have people banging yeah. the phones to get leads you know, look at it, like how much are you selling your product or service for, and then start to reverse engineer. I love to use the 10 to 15% of a gross sale to be allocated for sales and marketing and sales and marketing could, could be a blend of things. It could be telemarketing. It could be, you know, word of mouth. It could be your investments and whatever you're, you're doing yeah. plus your sales costs. So for me, I like to look at less than 20% to go to those efforts. And then you have to look at the life cycle value of a client, right? So if you're a plumber and you gain a client for life, you might spend a little bit more upfront just to capture that client. But for me, if like, if you can play in the 20% below to allocate for marketing. So for example, let's just say your average ticket's a thousand bucks. Yeah. If you can allocate $200 and guess what? You're a plumber and it's about 50 bucks a lead. That's four leads for 200 bucks. That's a, that's a, that makes sense. Like it's logical, yeah. right? You're going to get four leads for 200 bucks. It keeps us under the 20% of your cost of your job. And you can print money all day. And if there's opportunity and volume in your market, that's the second step we go. We say- and That's assuming you can convert one of those four into the thousand, right? Right. right. Okay. And that's where most of the owners, I, like we work specifically with entrepreneurial run companies. So they're very confident, right? They're like, we'll close hundred percent. I love to use the metric of one out of four. <laughs> right. Because, because you will close one out of four. And if you can't, there's a different discussion or maybe I can refer you to Sandler Training or somebody else that can help you. Right. But- if you can figure your numbers out like that, you can print money you, and you can grow an organization because you start to look at capacities and volumes. And what we've been able to do as a digital marketing company is understand different markets, right? So if our customers want to grow, so I'm outside of Detroit, Michigan, there's a really big market in the West side of the state called Grand Rapids. And a lot of people in this area, they want to start going to that market. We now can take that plumber, for example, to run some analysis in that area to then say, hey, same methodology. If you invest, you know, th you know, thousand dollars, you're going to get twenty leads, and you're going to close, you know, a twenty five percent of those leads. So it, it becomes, you know, again, it's it. That's why I say like trust, but you know, trust but verify. Work with a company yeah. that understands this methodology, and you'd be shocked at how many companies don't. Because if, I think if I feel if you work with a company that understands this. Yeah. And they're and they're driving that for your business. Like those are good dollars invested and you're going to see an outcome. Too many times people come to me, Wes, we've spent money in marketing, tens of thousands, thousands of thousands, doesn't matter. They're yeah. just burnt out and they're tired. And they're like, can you just help us? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So I love that calculation and, and it makes sense because if you can figure that out and get it under 20%, get it to the 15%, then you know that you now it's just about finding more money to get more leads, right? Because then you can just it's a to, model, right? And, and here, oh. and here's the other, and here's the other thing, Casey. Like you might find out that cost is 50, 60 percent of your ticket. Wow. And you might have to say, holy shit, here, something's not right, or we're not charging enough, or we're in the wrong market, or we need a new target market. Like it's gonna help you make decisions around your product and offering. Yeah. Because if you're a carpet cleaning company that 
does little small jobs versus, you know, you only work in luxury homes, you can charge more and you can go after a different market. Right. So it makes you, it makes you think as a leader of your organization, who the hell you are and define your, your, your target market and your audience, because you have to, I mean, oftentimes many people come to us, what was that book called? Like ready fire aim or whatever. Like yeah. they don't know what they're doing. And then they expect us to like figure everything out for them. And then they get pissed off because they're not getting something that they never knew what it was to begin with. Right. It's very confusing. Like we're not getting enough or we're not. And, and that's where I've learned running my organization that, you know, early on we would kind of be anything to everybody. Right. We would just say, yeah. yeah. But then it got really refined on like, if you can't answer these questions as a business owner, we're not the right company to work with. Like you need to have and, and think through these conversations or we're not going to add value because you're constantly going to be bitching. You're constantly going to be upset, you know? And, you know, again, if you don't know what you're looking for, we're not going to help you find it. You got to know what you're looking for and then we got to bring it to you. Yeah, how often I've seen that too. So I love the fact that you're saying we're not the right fit if you don't know your Maybe it's if you don't know your acquisition cost. Is it is it like that? If you don't, if you can't already calculate out your customer, but like the plumber, he doesn't know. Well, how, well we help them if you they're help. open, willing to do the work and have the conversation and play ball. Okay. Because we want to set some KPIs and some parameters yeah. to measure our success against. Yeah. And again, most I would say ninety nine point nine percent of the customers that we have the conversation. And again, that just takes it one step. You know, it's so much more than like. Yeah, we just slang websites and do digital. Like we build a relationship. We we're we're probably more consultants with our with our companies we work with than we are digital marketers. We just happen to do digital marketing because I believe it's the best mechanism to actually drive the leads. Right. You know, I would say like that is so much more valuable. You know, working with you to just even establish some of these numbers worth way more than even the marketing itself, right? Because then now you have a model, like building out that model is what helps you grow. Well, Casey, what's exciting for me and when I talk to people, it's like, you can hire a company to do it or guess what? If I, if, if I'm a plumbing company and you and I are partners, right? WC plumbing, and we're going to hire a marketer. We're going to say, Hey, we've already done the due due diligence in the market. We think we can generate leads for a hundred dollars a lead. We want to hire you. Do you think you can fulfill that obligation? Uh, Let's say that person has boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I've done radio, print, TV. Okay, cool. Your KPI is X amount of leads at this fee. We don't care how you do it, but yeah. now you have a goal, right? And now that mark. And what often happens is they hire companies like us to fulfill the work, and they manage the relationship so it doesn't bother you and I as owners. Like this is where everything just for me. This is this is the starting point for my brain with everything. Like I've had some people come to me with wacky ideas and I'm just like, boom, cost per lead. No way. This will never work in a million years. Yeah. You could try, you can fake it and you can keep pumping capital and doing things, but reality is reality, you know, and Google will tell me what the reality is. It's, it's a yeah. math problem. It's true. Math, math will hit you in the face. Like Facebook will take your money. <laughs> if, you, if, you know, if you're going for impressions, people will sell you impressions. That is we, and again, like, and, and look, I feel I'm probably in the top 5% of knowing this knowledge. Yeah. I bid on something six months ago on a Facebook campaign that I wanted to test. I went against my own judgment. I got a lot of impressions, but guess how many conversions I got? Zero. Yeah, Spent right. thousands. Really? It's enticing because you hear these sizzle offers and you get excited and it's emotional. And I look, I'm an emotional guy. I'm an emotional, like I just reacted to it. I went against my own judgment and Sure as shit, I got a lot of impressions to talk to you about, a lot of them, but I got a big fat uh, zero gross revenue coming in. And again, they'll say, well, Wes or Casey, the exposure you got, and now how many people know who you are? Bullshit. Bullshit. Right. Like, that's another great myth. If a million people who have no interest in whatsoever in buying your thing no. know about your thing, then... It doesn't actually like you can't feed yourself. That's my favorite phrase. I can't, I can't eat impressions, you know, like you can't feed your family with impressions. No. And again, I speak from entrepreneurial run companies. I'm not talking enterprise stuff. Like I'm not talking Nike Under Armour. I can't speak intelligently around that level of business. I'm talking about 
I'm scrappy, entrepreneurial. Most of the companies that I associate with are less than $50 million in revenue that have an entrepreneurial spirit or like family owned generation kind of businesses. They're scrappy. They're hungry. They're still trying to, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to get after it. Mm -hmm. Um, Question for you. What if a company is, they want to establish this, but say their lead source hasn't been so mathematical, like, you know, Google AdWords, it's, it's referrals and random walk-ins on the website chat. And, you know, it's, it's those things where maybe they were all organic and they didn't really have a cost per se to them just yet. Do you need to just start doing some campaigns to figure out that math or is there another way? Yeah. So like there's a cost to everything from my perspective. So if it's word of mouth referral, that's time and relationships, right? That's your time invested. Um, If it's the website, it's organic. Somebody's doing the organic SEO or you're developing content. So at some capacity, it's time. And I'm always evaluating like, what is my highest, best use of time? My team's time. Mine's relationships. It's time spent. You know, if I can sit down and you and I get to know, you know, play four or four hours of golf together, I love golf. Yeah. And I used to think golf was so stupid, such a waste of time when I was younger. Cause I'm like, who the hell has four and a half hours to spend? <laughs> Why would they want to spend that time with somebody? But as I'm getting older, right, 41, and just being through all the stuff I've been through, it's like, man, that four and a half hours of time is like I've met some great people and really get to know people and spending that time on the golf course. Um but that's that's time and money, right? And time is money. So you have to evaluate that. So if you at the end of the month, if you're looking where all your leads came in from, again, it's there's no magic answer to that question. But I think that every entrepreneur or if you have colleagues or mentors or associates that sort of know this stuff, you can just ask them and be like, hey, man, like this isn't my area of expertise, but like, what are your thoughts around this? Or, you know, message me on LinkedIn. Like, this is the shit as an entrepreneur, like. I just love to give people insight and just, you know, if I can give them that one idea, like, you know, you and I both come from EO, you know, been there for like nine years. And oh yeah, sometimes it's just like those little things you hear and like can change, can change your whole perspective. I mean, that's been my life up until this point, like little things I've collected along the way, you know? So. Yeah. What I get from that is, is really thinking about even if there isn't an actual line on your, your Amex sheet that, there's probably a line in, in your calendar somewhere. It's like, it's the time cost. And sometimes that's even more expensive than the AdWords. If you really calculate out salaries or the limited, it's a limited resource, right? It, 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 it's, there's a big difference too, right? Like when I first started in business, I got involved with BNI, Business Networking International. Yeah. So those who don't know what that is, it's like, 30 local entrepreneurs that are all in different industries come together once a week, have coffee and send each other leads and get to know each other. The whole premise is you have, there's 30 people that I have 29 people selling my product for me. But like that was a week, every week, one hour a week times 52, half hour there, half hour after. I mean, that's like probably 200 hours a year two to 300 hours a year that I invested, break down what my value is. Like there's a cost to that. And it's like, how many leads did I get? And if it's not satisfactory, what do I forecast the next three to six to 12 months? And at right. some point when I started to think clearly about that stuff, I'm like, this isn't worth my time because my I can spend two hours a day or a week or whatever on this other activity that can drive greater growth and in future. And that's like, some people might think, wow, that's kind of crazy to think about. It's like, well, that's like, to me, like, that's how you get ahead. Like your time is your biggest asset. And if there's other things that you can do that are, moving you down the field faster and better and more quality, you have to constantly evaluate what you're doing. And lead gen's no different, right? If your marketing company is not performing, ask questions. Like even if you're with us, start talking to other companies every quarter, like keep people, hold their feet to the fire and say, Hey, we're with this company. They're generating leads and it's going pretty well. It's a hundred bucks. You might have a company that does a test campaign and they're able to generate the same level of quality for 50 I worked with some divorce attorneys many years ago, and I believe they were spending $280 a lead for divorce attorney leads in the area. And they like they didn't know a whole heck of a lot about it. So they were kind of happy, sort of know the market. I was able to take that down to 80 bucks a lead. Wow. They still weren't super happy. Like it, but like they didn't understand the cost of the lead. But like I looked at that as a huge win. So for every lead you're getting you were happy spending an, an additional $200. Like 
we just saved you $200 a lead. Like that's where I think as a leader, CEO, whatever, manager, of PL, you're constantly evaluating these things on how to drive revenue, reduce cost, keep quality right. high, right? Keep quality high, right? You know, you mentioned the BNI thing. It's kind of funny. I just had this conversation yesterday about like a chamber of commerce, which might for some, you know, whatever your target customer is fantastic. Maybe it's a great fit uh, or maybe it's not. Maybe, you know, it, you can get a million impressions at BNI or the chamber and it's just none of those people are going to buy right. your thing. And so it's like, it's dangerous. Like it's a little trap of like, oh yeah, of course, let's do this. But then your time is on these events and all these things that are happening. And then it's like crickets because it just, that's not where your people, your right. customers are hanging out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I got a lot of practice with BNI. I feel like that was my like first step of getting really comfortable, getting in front of people, putting myself out there, you know. I remember meeting yeah. people there that you know, I, I'd been part of that organization for like a year and then I would like talk to them on the side and they, even after a year, they had no idea what I did. <laughs> and I'm like, I put that back on me. I'm like, I'm not doing a good job clearly communicating right. who the hell I am and what I do, you know? Right. So yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Well, man, uh, fascinating. I feel like I could talk marketing with you all day. Maybe we'll just have to have you come back and do part do you yeah, know, at sure, some point. Sure. Uh, but Tell me, like, who are you? Who are you? Take me back in time. Little West days. Did you always know you're going to be an entrepreneur, a marketer, yeah. all these good things? Yeah. You know, I think that, you know, back back in my early 20s, I, I somehow, some way got into writing loans and uh, doing mortgages. And I remember I was like 24, 25. And it took me six months to sell my first loan. I worked commission only. Like, it was terrible. Like, I got my freaking ass kicked. Jeez. And I remember like, I'm like, I can either sit here and keep doing this or make a change. Right. So I end up like contacting the top producers of the company and kind of asking them like, look, everybody has the same one hours in a day. What am I doing wrong? I quickly turned that around and became top producer within like wow. a couple months. So I, I was like the fire hydrant one day and like the big dog the next day. So like people from the company are reaching out. And what then did I they tell you? Do, you, I mean, do you remember what you learned from them? Like, was there some kind of nugget that just stand, stood out or, you know, it was, I think if I can reflect back, it was more like, it's, it's really on you. I think at the time I was young, I was in my twenties and I was kind of like sitting around waiting for something to happen. And I just started taking action. So it was like, look, if I have to make a hundred dials a day, like that's just what I have to do. And that's what these guys are doing. That's what made them successful. So I think for me, like the entrepreneurial thing was like, find someone who's doing what you want to do and then figure out the blueprint and just do it. And I think oftentimes entrepreneurs want to do everything themselves or take the hard road. It's like, you don't really have to do that. Like you can reach out to smarter people that are open and willing to help. Um, so when I turned 25, I was like, I can't do mortgages the rest of my life. Like I'm 24. Nobody takes me serious. And my, my buddy was running a web company from high school. So we got connected and he, he looked me dead in the eye and was like, you can sell anything and everything. Right. And I'm like, at 25, I'm like, man, I'm the poster boy for tech. Like all these old people have no idea about websites. They trust me. So I fit the demographic. And the, again, the web, I mean, I'm talking 15 years ago. It's crazy to think about, but like web and SEO wasn't like, it was sort of just there. Like it, it, it's not where it was today by any means. SEO was not even really a thing. Right. <clears throat> so I sold for that company. And I think the first three or four deals I brought in, they steamrolled and destroyed every relationship I brought through the door. And my thing was, look, company, like they don't care about you. It's me. Like I give a shit how I show up my reputation. Like I watched this company run around like chickens with their head cut off. And I was like, it almost to me seemed like they were working harder to screw everything up. And I'm like, you can either do a good job or a shitty job. And like, I'd want to do a good job. So I actually took one of their developers and developed my own system. Cause I'm like, there, there's a way easier way to do this. So I had this idea around creating landing pages within my own platform that I could get people ranked on search engines. And that's where it all began. I, I just, I, I stopped working at the bank. My wife had became a nurse at that point. So, you know, she was making 60 or so grand. I got, was able, she was able to kind of float me while I got things yeah. ramped up. I had that company for about two years, kind of like figuring stuff out, you know, trying stuff. And the one thing that common denominator that came out of that were companies were like, we want you to build our website. Like everything you're doing is on your own thing, build our website. And I had a bad taste in my mouth from that last company. Cause I'm like, it's just such a pain in the ass. I mean, web, 
a website's a big lift, man. It's a lot of work and I, I didn't yeah. want to do it. But then I looked in the mirror and I'm like, if I don't do this, like somebody else is going to do it. And people are like throwing money at me. Right. So I did it. And, uh, you know, I, I three years prior, I, I had like a dream and I woke up in a cold sweat and I was like saying out of my mouth, high level marketing, high level marketing. And I literally went to my computer at 4 a.m. and went to cheapnames.com looked up high level marketing and that domain name was available. And at the time, everything marketing was gone. So I just kind of, I had high level marketing in my back pocket for about three years. Um, I ended up partnering with a guy who had his own proprietary cust- uh, content management system. Mm-hmm. Long story short, no nine, we partnered and, and started high level marketing. And the, and the context was simple. I only want to work with you know small entrepreneurial run companies um, and just make a difference, right? Just be straight up. Because even yeah. at the time, like I just saw that company just fucking lie to everybody straight to their face. Nobody had an answer. So if you're a plumber back in 09 or even today, where do you go? Like at the time, there's yellow pages. There's like all this crap out there and nobody's like, I'm still yet to find anybody that raves about this one thing that they're doing that they're super happy with. <laughs> and that was at, you know, then it was like, man, it was a lot of fun. So, you know, I started the company and I had a simple idea. I was like, look, I want to charge a setup fee and I want to charge a monthly fee and I wanted the reoccurring revenue. And that's how I was able to grow and scale the company because my, look, I didn't go to some sophisticated college. I went to community college for four years to get my associates. Yeah. Um, And I I didn't take capital to build a company, but what I was doing is once I would clip five to $7,000 a month of incremental value every month, I started doing that every month. I was driving six to eight grand a month in, in monthly reoccurring revenue. I'd hire somebody yeah. and people around me are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I would just hire smart people and just stick them in the, stick them in the company. And we grew from, you know, eight or so people to like 35 within a year. I was just hiring anybody and you know, everybody Jeez. just to like stick them in. And cause I'm like, yeah, we just had a, we had a flywheel man. we were delivering great work. And again, I mean, a lot of shit along the way, obviously, but I always had this natural, like, I don't know. I love entrepreneurs. I love small business. Nobody's really looking out for small business. And I kind of felt like, man, if I can just give value to somebody, whether they take it or not, you know, I'm, I'm making a difference. I mean, we've, we've taken some companies from like one truck, one operator to now they're like 50 plus trucks and they're huge organizations. And they've been with us since 2009. So to me, it's like, man, if you can create a flywheel where you're adding great value, customers are paying you great money. You have a platform you know, when I first started the business, it was like, I want to make as much money as possible. Right. That's what I started the business. And then realized as soon as I did that, I'm like, huh, there's, there's more to life than this. Right. <laughs> and I, then it's, you know, having employees and building something and, you know, just yeah. kind of fast forward to today, 2022, you know, we're at about 120 employees and we'll do about 22 million in revenue this year. Yes. And our goal is to do a hundred million revenue. And that was my, my big goal. Like once I got over the money of, I want to make as much money as possible. My next goal, this sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I want to do hundred million dollars in revenue just because to me, that's opportunity. Like yeah. that for me, it's like whether I move into consulting or speaking or maybe entrepreneurs would take me serious. Cause like, look, I'm a leader. I'm a C like I'm a normal human being. So like my worst enemies between my head. So right. sometimes I feel like, man, we're, you know, what I'm saying is an offering value. If we do a hundred million, maybe people would take us a serious but I think that if we can grow and scale a company and, and all the changes, because what got us a 7 million to then consolidate our company is what we're doing now is completely different. And to go from 22 million to 50 million is going to be completely different. So it's a cool evolution. I love just the growth, the learning, the evolution of the product. And, you know, look, technology's changed. I mean, my kids, I have a, I have four kids. My oldest is 13. I mean, I remember back the stages of my life. Like I remember going to my friend's house, going on casa.com and downloading music, taking all yeah, that, downloads, that, burning it on CDs. <laughs> you know, now my son's like whipping out his phone on Apple music, like, boom, this album just came out today. It's like, yeah, <laughs> well, back when I was, you're, you're like, it's just kind of funny. But if you think about that, I mean, technology is advancing so fast. True. The fact that we're still doing digital marketing and kind of the, what we were talking about earlier, just that simple, like all that stuff still exists today, you know, and, yeah. and, and it's stuff they don't teach you in school. You have to learn it yourself. You have to spend money on bad advertising to figure it out. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's kind of a cool, you know, it's a cool space. 
yeah, it's a really cool space, man. I, man, I remember Kaza. I remember the days back in the day. It's like, oh, you shut down Napster, great. There's this Kaza thing. <laughs> the internet was just one big meme at that point. Yeah, LimeWire um, shutting down my computer, and yeah. <laughs> so I have a hypothetical question for sure. you because I may or may not have a time machine here in New Hampshire, right? So come visit. We get some beer, some lobster. Let's go have a good time, and we use the time machine. It's a particular kind of time machine where you go back in time and you meet yourself after that, that college, right? College is done. A couple of days later, you meet that version of Wes. What do you say to yourself? What kind of advice would you give yourself? You know, there are so many times growing this organization from that point to this point. You know, this vision in my mind always goes back. Do you ever see that, that poster, that picture of like that caveman with the pick? And he's digging for that diamond. And yeah. it's like, it's, it's like he's, he's chipping away for this diamond. And it's like literally a foot from the wall that he's chipping on. And he like gives up. And the whole concept is, I think for me, I was really big as a younger, as a younger guy of like the destination is like the best. Like for me, it's the journey, right? Like it's never enough for like, what's your purpose? Because if it's money, it's not, the, it's not money. Like it's got to be the purpose and passion. Um, and yeah, just the, just the conversation around like, don't give up because there's instances in the business that I was so close from throwing in the towel. Like I'm, I'm literally day, like a day of throwing in a towel, like shit that happened that completely changed my trajectory. And if I would have given up, it would have completely taken me down the path, but I had enough conviction to like something like it was a higher power for like, I had these convictions and I mean, just everything was so counterintuitive. So, you know, I would just tell my younger self, like, hey, man, hang on, man. Trust your gut. Trust the people around you. you know, I had a lot of naysayers in the beginning, right? A lot of people that just, you know, I had a lot of people around me, right? I'm young. I'm in my 20s. A lot of friends, family. Everybody's like, how are you going to do this? Why are you going to do this? There's already web companies. Like, everybody, like, and then if you fast forward, it's a completely different perspective now. Um, so I'd say stay strong. Trust your gut. Um yeah, I'm kind of proud of myself with that question because I think I did a lot of that though. Like I was very, um, you know, I just I just stuck to it. You know, I didn't give up. You know, so like in that minor that chipping the pick, like I found the diamond. And I think with anything, it's just yeah, know your purpose, fill yourself with opportunities and things that fulfill you, and just keep going because it's not the destination; it's the journey. Um, because look, I mean, I had an event with my company last year. I mean, I, my partner and I sold 80% of our business. Um, yeah. I'll be quite honest with you. A lot of people are like, oh my God, it's like this life-changing moment and this. And I swear to God, like he and I were having a beer at, at my golf club and our phones went off because we both got a, a large deposit <laughs> and we, and we look at each other and we're like, we had a good run. Now what? Yeah. And I hate to be like, it was very non climatic. Like it was just another day. And it's like, all right, what now? Like, and that to me is like, you know, just, just pay attention to the journey, make sure you're have everybody you want along with you on the journey. Um, Cause I think I, I did everything the way I, if I reflect back, I wouldn't change anything, but I definitely could have did it a lot faster, hmm. but I'm also thankful for the learnings. Right. Cause I think you have to go through stuff and, failures and challenges and everything that goes into running a business along with life. You know, when I first started my company, I had zero kids. I have four boys right now. And my wife's pregnant with a girl, our fifth kid that's due in November. And actually it's our 16th, it's our 16th wedding anniversary today. So not only do you have business to worry about and being an entrepreneur and running a company and decisions, you've got life and it's like, yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's got to keep yeah, your head kind of focused, you know? Yeah, but that journey, man, what a great reminder. It, it, hey, at the end, at the finish line, you're like, okay, all right. But it it's exist. almost like a, a challenge of now what do we do? Now, now we don't have the journey per se, or we have to figure out a new journey. Whereas when you're on the journey, if you could appreciate that, then that's so much more of the experience, right? Like climbing Mount Everest, it's you spend 15 minutes at the top, right? right. Years to get there. And so right. if you're, if you're waiting for that, that dopamine hit at the end, you're going to be disappointed. It's, it's, it's the whole process of getting there. That's great. Advice. It's a process too. I even tell my wife, like it, it's, it might be a sick thing for me, but 
I get so much on a, like I can plan a great event. And like, so I plan all our vacations. My wife loves it. Cause she just gets to show up and my kids just love it. But like, I love that process and the journey when yeah. we actually go on vacation, it's less than like, it's almost like anticlimactic. It's like, okay, yeah. we're here. Nice, nice. And it's some people might th- look at that and be like, dude, you're crazy. Like you make no sense, but it's just how I'm wired. And I think that that's what I didn't understand. 50, you know, at being 25 versus 41 is just like, I never read a textbook in high school. I never paid attention in college. Turning 25, I absorbed as much content as possible. Like I just invested in myself, you know, with e- since, since then, like I did the whole MIT thing at EO. I've, I've yeah. read so many books and I've just kind of like been shoveling as much information in me as possible. And, and that's something I never really, I took for granted, like, why would somebody yeah. spend 10 grand on themselves? Like, that's stupid or what a waste of money. I'm going, I'm going to strategic coach in September. I'm, I'm flying to Chicago. I'm doing a year program. So here I am. Some people might think, wow, like you kind of made it to the finish line. I'm like, dude, I'm a blip on the radar. Like I have so much yet to learn. I'm thirsty for learning. I'm still all in on EO. You know, I'm investing in strategic coach. I've also hired a life coach on the side about six months ago. Like, so it's almost like it, it's, it's the journey, man. And, and yeah, you're still on that it's, journey. It's great. Uh, man, I love strategic coach too. Such a, I'm excited, cool man. I program. love who, not how the gap in the game, like Dan Sullivan stuff is just hundred percent. there. Yeah, I love um, his content. Yeah. It's like one of the three thing. I mean, for me, it's like EOS EO and strategic coach or like, yes. like the, yeah, my buddy sums up perfect. You know, like I love EOS for business. Like that changed my life. Yeah. Because I'm a crazy visionary, like everything makes sense in my head. And I, I didn't know why anybody around me didn't know what the hell was going on because it made crystal clear sense to my head. But my buddy told me, he actually, he's, he's really good friends with Gino. He's like Gino's right-hand implementer. He's like strategic, co- he's like, if you love EOS for your business, strategic coach is for your life. 100%. I said, yeah. dude, I said that's, that's what I'm missing. That's what I need. Yeah, 100%, man. Um, so cool. Hey, we're going to... Totally run out of time, which is this. I don't know if you looked at the clock. We just warped through oh. um, almost an hour. Where can people connect with you? Where do you want them to hit you up? LinkedIn, socials, websites, all that. Uh, yeah, I mean, probably the best way is LinkedIn. Wesley okay. Matthews, Matthews with one T. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You know, I'm not. I don't check this off all day, every day. You can go to the website, highlevelmarketing.com, more if you are interested in website design development, but. If you're interested in some of the stuff I mentioned, you know, LinkedIn's a good one, man. I, I love speaking to entrepreneurs and help, you know, answering any kind of questions and, and adding value any, any way I can, if at all. Well, that is fantastic, man. We'll put all that in the show notes. So everyone can just click right on through to that. Thank you so much for coming on here. I literally, I mean, I've been learning and it's great. It's great. To your point, you can always learn more. And I've just this whole time I've got some great notes. I even have some to do's, right. You know, as I'm learning from you, I'm like, Oh shit, got to do that. Let's go. Um, so, so my notes are full of, uh, learnings and to do's and I'm jazzed from even having you here. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. And for those listening, if you learn something and I freaking know you did because I literally have Two pages of notes over here. Remember, I told you that was like, you know, it was blank. Now, now it's compl- I have no space left on it. I've got so much notes here. So if you learn something, share this episode with someone else, one person, two people, 9,000 people, whatever the number is, that's thought leadership. Make it happen. Wes, thanks again, man. You're the best. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. This has been another exciting episode of the Hardcore Marketing Show. We will catch you all next time.